This video is on example 2 of graphing radical functions. This time I'm going to graph y equals negative 1 half square root of x minus 1 plus 4. Last example I used this calculator which has a slightly newer software. So this example I'm going to use a slightly older software calculator. Calculators are very similar, it's just that the software might be updated and might not be. So on this one I want to graph y equals negative 1 half square root of x minus 1 plus 4. Again, this is a square root, an even root, has a domaining range that is combined by the h and k. So before we do any graphing, I want to find the a, h, and k. The a value, we want to determine is it positive or negative. So if we look at our a value, it's the part that's multiplied to the radical. The a value is a negative. And then we want to look at the value of the a, the actual absolute value. So the absolute value of negative one half is a positive one half. So the a, the number for a is one half. So I can actually combine these two things and it says negative and one half. So that would be a negative one half, which is what our a value is. Our h value comes from inside the radical, our radicand. We have x minus h, so it's x minus one. That means that h is going to be the one. We know that 1 minus 1 gives us 0, which is what we need to determine our h value. The k value is what's added or subtracted to the outside of the radical. The k value is plus 4, so our k value is just going to be a positive 4. So I want to graph this to know what's going to happen and what it should look like. So if I go to my calculator, again this is a slightly older version, I'm going to again go to my y equals, I'm going to type in negative one half, so I want to make sure my one half is in parentheses. That's one of the things about the older calculators is that I cannot make it look like a full on fraction. In the newer software, I can actually hit alpha and then the y equals, and I can make it look like a fraction. If I press one, I can just do one over two and it looks like an actual fraction. This one, the older software cannot do that. If I press alpha y equals, nothing happens. It goes to the y equals symbol. So I want to make sure that my 1 half is actually in parentheses. So I'm going to put parentheses 1 divided by 2. The reason we do this is so that the entire 1 half is going to be multiplied to the radical instead of just the 2. So now I can type in the square root symbol. Now with the older software, the square root symbol does not keep moving with the example. It opens up a set of parentheses instead, which the newer calculators do not do. So with this, my x minus 1 is my radicand. I want to make sure that my x minus 1 is inside of this parenthesis set. So I'll type in x minus 1, and because that's the end of my radical, I need to make sure I close this parenthesis set so that I can get out of the radical. What this did, instead of extending the actual radical at the top of the radical, it said that the open parenthesis is the beginning of the radical. So then when I close that parenthesis, it's going to close the radical. So at the end of the radical, I then have to put plus 4. So I'm just going to type in plus 4. Now I should have that negative 1 half, and I have the square root of x minus 1 all in the radical, and then plus 4 on the outside. Now I can press graph. This is what the shape looks like versus the one we had up here on that first example. It is actually going down. It's being reflected, and that happens because you have that a value of negative. So just as a, a showing of making sure I know that this graph is correct, I can go to my a newer calculator to type in that negative, and then I'll do that alpha y equals, that fraction part, I'll do 1 over 2, press the right arrow key to get off of the fraction, now I can do my square root symbol, and then I'm going to type in that same thing of x minus 1 inside the radical, so x minus 1, and that radical actually extends with it, then I want to press over and put plus 4. Now this, in the newer calculator, the newer software, will actually look exactly like it does on the paper. And if I press graph on that, both of my graphs match. So I know that even with the older software, I can still graph these. So this does have a starting point because it does not keep going left, it does not keep going up, so I do have a starting point. And that should come from our h and our k, 1, 4. If we look back at the coordinate, that looks to be at about 1 and 4. But I can make sure of that by going to my table and putting a table of coordinates. If I go to my second graph, I go to my table. And actually, when I opened it up, it went straight to 0. 
your calculator might not do that, and that's okay. I want to make sure that I put my h value of 1 and my k value of 4. So I go to the x value of 1 and make sure the y value is 4. This is a correct coordinate. If I look above this in the table, I see a whole bunch of x values which are independent, but my y values are errors. So I know that I cannot go any further than 1, 4. So 1, 4 will in fact be my starting coordinate. So that's the first coordinate I'm going to write down in my table. Then I'm going to use my table from the calculator to find some more good coordinates. So we have 2, 3 and a half, 3.5. 3.5 is actually a fairly decent coordinate to be able to graph, so we're going to graph that one. So 2 and then 3.5. Because I can graph halfway from one part to the next part. The next coordinate of 3, 3.2929 might be a little more difficult to graph, so I'm going to skip that one. I will skip the 3.134, but then I have 5, 3, so I'll graph 5, 3. I'll keep going, see if I can find any more. 2.882 is a little difficult. 2.7753, 2.6771, 2.6779. I can graph 10, 2.5. So I have four coordinates that I can graph, and if we notice that x, I'm at 10 already, and I know that on my coordinate plane, I can't really go past 10 if I'm gonna if each of these spaces are one. So I have four coordinates which I'm gonna graph. So my first coordinate of 1, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm gonna make sure that this is my starting point. 2, 3.5, so 2, and then 1, 2, 3, and a half. Then I'll go 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then 10, 2.5, so no 10's over here, 1, 2.5. So again, we know that this is the starting point, nothing's to the left of it, nothing's above it. So I want to start here and then connect my coordinates onward and put an arrow on it saying that it will keep going. So this will keep going because it is a square root curve. So the domain, again, it's confined by your h value. So we're going to have a 1 in our domain. Now the 1 is actually going to be your smallest value because this will keep going to the right, which is a positive infinity. So I know that I'm going to go to that positive infinity, and we're going to start it at that 1. So it's going to be a closed bracket, 1, positive infinity, open bracket. So for the range, it's again confined by the k value, which is 4. So I know there's going to be a 4 in here. But our range actually goes down forever. It's going to keep going down because our y values are decreasing. So the range actually goes to negative infinity, which is your smallest value. You cannot put negative infinity as your largest value because negative infinity is your smallest minimums are on the left. So we're going to put our negative infinity on the left hand side. You can never put negative infinity on the right. So I'm going to have an open bracket, but it's going from negative infinity all the way up to that positive 4 value on the y. And I can close that bracket. So this is different because this has been reflected. And it's that a value of negative told us that we're going to have a negative infinity in our range. So with the transformations from the parent function, remember the parent function, which is the y equals the square root of x. So we have to look at, do we have a negative a? Do we have a value for a? Do we have an h? Do we have a k? We have a is not positive, a is not 1, h is not 0, k is not 0. So we're going to have transformations from all four of these. So the first one, since a is negative, that actually tells us that we have a reflection in the x-axis. So the tr first transformation is a reflection in the x-axis, or over the x-axis. The next thing we look for is a dilation, the a value, if we're going to have a stretch or a compress. So dilation is 1 half. That means that it, since it's not 1, there is a dilation. So we have a dilation which in this case will be a vertical it'll be a vertical compress because the a value is smaller than 1 so a vertical compress of and our a value is 1 half so it's going to be a vertical compress of 1 half then we look at our h and our k because the h and the k tells us our translations translation horizontally by h and vertically by k so horizontal is left and right 
vertical is up and down. So if we look at our h value, h value is a positive one, so it's a translation. h is horizontal, so that's horizontally positive is to the right. So translation of right, and it's a one. k is vertically, so vertically positive is up. So it's going to be up and then four. So we have a reflection in the x-axis. It's a dilation or vertical compress of one half. And we have a translation of right one and up four. And we can think about this. If this is where the original y equals square root of x is supposed to start at, if we go to the right one and up four, that's how we got to that starting coordinate. That's that translation. And then your graph would normally open up like this. It's being flipped, so that's a reflection. And it's also much, much smaller versus from this one because this one's actually bigger than normal because it had a, a vertical stretch of two instead of a vertical compress.